Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We're here at the VAB at uh, Cape Canaveral taking a look at our uh, Mercury Explorer 2 on a RA9 rocket. Uh, we're going to be uh, making some changes to this thing. We have a new mission in mind. And so all of this, basically from this separator down, we are going to keep. Uh, it's other than these... <laughs> other than our two Hydrolox engines, which we should have more data on now, uh, the whole system's pretty reliable. But uh, we have an excess of Delta V that we don't strictly need. And we can just go ahead and get rid of this. We'll be starting from scratch. Uh, our new mission, should we choose to accept it, is to put something on the surface of Mars. Yeah, we need to move you aside. And for that, we're going to need a little bit more of a robust core, more science equipment. We've only done just a very brief flyby of uh, Mars, so nothing quite substantial at this point. Uh, we hope to be able to put... Oh, where did it go? It's over there now. This stage in orbit to act as a comms relay and put whatever we're going to build out here on the actual surface. Now I'll probably speed up this build, build footage in post and uh, just comment over it, so expect the fast forward to start right now. And here we go. So we started out with this basic core, but even just the addition of a small heat shield is uh, way beyond our avionics limit. We saw this issue with the Venus lander also. So, trying to buckle two of them together gets us within the threshold of uh, the avionics package. Um, and then it's just a matter of trying to bolt on uh, some system of control so we can keep orientation during descent and possibly even make a deorbit maneuver on the back of these RCS thrusters. But just the addition of fuel form tips us over our avionics limit. So, just like the Venus lander, we're up to three cores now. Um, all of which will be independently drawing their own power. And then trying to get a balanced load of scientific equipment on here, including a short-range radio antenna, which, yeah, we'll keep that uh, start activated will be the main one there. Now, I do hesitate with this magnetometer because I know there's a bunch more equipment that we have to put on here, namely two of these long-range dishes uh, to keep direct contact with Earth if possible. Um, kind of like those going on top, I, since we know that that does not throw off the center of the uh, uh, center of mass by entirely too much. And then uh, four more static panels so that we can have hopefully enough power to maintain us during descent. Now I'm going to abuse the ever-living hell out of this uh, adjustment node thing, lets you move stuff around, just because it does make life a lot easier when you're working with something that's uh, asymmetrical. Not asymmetrical, but uh, isn't squared off to make uh, four-point connections really work. So um, going with four of things is a lot lighter than going with six of things while still maintaining you know, usability. So I'm going to go with four of these bigger thrusters and try to position them out here underneath these static panels so they're not firing into our uh, expendable or extendable panels. Although, in retrospect, those aren't really going to deploy until you're on the ground, and therefore then the RCS thrusters wouldn't matter so much. But yes, I forgot the parachute. So, I'm going to get that size appropriately and then get all of the things set up. We're putting in a drogue made of Kevlar and get its uh, altitude settings and try to dial back the reserve chutes, we won't have time to deploy them if primaries fail, and maybe it saves weight, I'm not sure, I've never tried before. So there's our drogue programmed, and now our primary chute will also be Kevlar. And we'll get uh, that stuff set in. It's telling us it's too heavy, which is fine. Uh, I don't expect there to be any fuel left in this thing when it comes time for chute deployments, or if there are, the thrusters will just be burning the whole time. That will significantly lighten the load. And so, might as well get some of our action groups set up here, including our boot and our radio in, and we'll go ahead and place our long-range antenna, just one of them though, back on the top. And we are over our avionics limit. That's fine. Uh, we'll knock some fuel down, 
just a bit until we get something acceptable. And I've decided that it really uh, wouldn't hurt to be able to ditch this heat shield. And it does help uh, save us on these avionics costs quite a bit. But thinking about a uh, descent mode, there's not a whole lot of atmosphere on Mars, so we're actually probably going to have to do at least a partially powered descent, which raises an entirely new set of problems. And how do you control for it? And does it need to be on the other side of the heat shield? Yes. Yes, it does. So, going with this core, which does not shut down, unfortunately, so we have to provide power for it all the way out there, which really sucks, but... Yeah, I guess that's a small price to pay. And then let's get some engines on here. Um, I'm not 100% convinced on these one kilonewton thrusters. There may be some further testing as far as uh, this module is concerned, or this descent system is concerned. It also won't let me switch the fuel over. All right, all that's good now. Switching things out and verifying that all of my sus the systems are set up for Aerozine and uh, N2O. And then we'll get that heat shield back on there. Now, I imagine the descent stage to be controlled with the RCS thrusters on the probe itself. So, we don't really need additional thrusters there. We are going to need additional solar panels, though, to make sure that thing can stay powered all the way out to Mars. So, we'll give it its own action group, boot descent stage. And that's that. So, uh, that's what we're doing so far. And, well, there it is. Uh, we're going to try to put this on the surface of Mars. Um, I'm not sure about the chutes. I'm not sure about the descent stage. That uh, sea level thrust to weight ratio is abysmal. Uh, just because this core is really heavy. Not very excited about that. And, but... Man, <laughs> there's just, it's kind of a rock and a hard place. I'm at this place again where I just don't have very good cores to do these sorts of things with, and it's a little, it's a little frustrating at times, but, um, you know, we, we try to make do. So we're going to reattach our transfer stage. There it is, and hopefully all of our, yeah, none of our stages are correct anymore. So, oh boy. That's that decouple. And that's that engine. So, that decouple needs to be up there. Because, yeah, decouple that, then fire those engines. Where is that? There's that decouple. Let's slide you down here. Oh no, that engine fires, then that decouples, then that decouples, then those engines fire, and then we ditch it, and then our chutes, etc, etc. Now, our total delta V specs are 1619. That's not too bad. Our transfer stage, however, this stage here, is left with only 2,332. Eek. Uh, just because we know we're going to need probably a thousand of this to get to Mars. So that should do the rest of the Mars transfer and then we ditch it because all the hydrogen will have uh, boiled off by the time we get there. So that leaves a orbital intercept of 2332. That might make for a very, very, very uh, eccentric orbit, if at all, provided we can get close enough. But uh, we're going to give it a try anyway. The only thing I really need to do is to add some antennas. To this for short range communication. We'll just boot those manually. I'm not really all that upset by it. And hope for the best, although really I could extend this stage out a bit. I would just like to see 3,000 here. Okay, except the numbers aren't working anymore. I don't know what we're doing. Let's... <laughs> I can't click on it anymore either. I can't... Am I in the wrong thing? Nope. Awesome. Way to go, KSB. Alright. So, uh... Oh, no, I'm not even getting attachment nodes. Son of a bitch. It's 
not above ground either. Arr. Let's see if we can rename it. Mars Lander 1. Uh, of course, unless you guys have better suggestions, I'm always looking to see better suggestions. Yeah. Damn it. Oh. Well, there's that. At least I can get it above ground. Good. Yes. I love this launcher so much, man. Total cost on this without those fairings is about the only piece we're missing. 16 grand. That's so cheap. Alright, well. These numbers aren't going to refigure for me, and it's not going to let me detach stuff. That's rough. Yeah, nor is it going to give me attachment nodes for these things. Okay, well. Save it again. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and add one to the build list and then try to come back and edit it. So, well, uh, sorry there wasn't much as far as flight time in this episode. Kind of under a crunch. But uh, thanks for hanging out, everybody. That's going to do it for us today. I'm going to reboot KSP and maybe try to get a little test flight for this guy going. Uh, obviously, it'd be daft to test fly without our fairings. Thanks. So, yep. Yeah. That's going to do it for us today. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. I look forward to hanging out with you all again tomorrow. See you then.